Hey everybody, welcome back to Creekside Maples. I'm Tony, and today we're building our new vacuum filter system for our maple syrup. Basically, this is a do-it-yourself project. You can buy vacuum filters for maple syrup. However, it's not in our budget. They're, you know, six, eight hundred dollars. So I looked at some videos online, thought I can build that. I'm just taking a couple pots and I'm going to put one on top of the other and I'm going to create a vacuum with a vacuum pump and the basic concept is syrup goes in the top one, filters here. There'll be a spigot here for pouring it into the bottles. And then there'll be another um, spigot that comes out here or a connector that goes through here with a bulkhead fitting where my vacuum line will fit onto and it'll create a vacuum in the bottom. That's what we hope anyway. What I've done so far, I've taken my top big pot and these are I think 24 quart um, pots and all I've done is cut the bottom out used a jigsaw with a metal blade and I left a little bit of the ridge the edge here just to give it a little bit more rigidity I may regret that later if I do I'll just come back and cut that out but uh, never built one of these before so it's trial and error the next thing I did was I took this is uh, it's called silicone tape. And I put a round a couple of rounds around the bottom of this pot. So when I sit it in here, it seals in really nice and tight against the outer um, pot here. Now what I've got to do is I've got to find a way to make sure when I put these in that it snaps in place. All I've done is I went and bought some of these little toggle snaps, basically. This will go on the top pot, this hooks in here, and then this folds down here. And I want to use my rivet, pop rivet gun to put them on with. So I want to get these, I don't want to get these handles in the same place, I don't think, I don't know. Maybe I do. Who knows? I guess it really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna fit this top pot down in there nice. And I'm just going to figure out kind of where I need these at based on this being down in there. And the good thing about these, I just bought these on Amazon as they're adjustable. So I don't have to have them perfectly mat or put on here. So we're just gonna put them like that, kind of like that. I think that's all I'm going to do. So I'll take a marker. I need four of these. So we'll take the marker and kind of, uh, oh, I don't know, here and here for one. So one over here, and then I'll put one here, kind of like this, like that. And the same thing over here. I'll just kind of put it here. And same thing here. And there's those marked. So now I've got to drill them. And the thing that I found out about this stuff it does not drill easy. <laughs> now I will have to drill that pot as well to put these on, but I'm just going to put this on here first. I think I'm going to get a piece of wood. Lay it on here. See if that helps a little bit. All right. So I'll just make a couple holes here to start with. Because if you don't use a little punch to do a starter hole, 
<laughs> the bit just slides all over the place. So let's see. This metal is so hard or whatever, I just couldn't get the drill bit through it by hand, so we'll do it on the drill press. Finally! Now let's see if that's the right size for our pop rivet. Yep, perfect. So, it looks really close. So I'm just going to take my tape measure and make sure the other two are the same. Right on the money. And there we have it. All of our holes to put our uh, anchors on with. The reason I put two pop rivets before I tighten one is in case I have to move them. I find it's a lot easier to move them before I snap them in place. And just like that, we've got that little doohickey on there. Looks good. Nothing wrong with that at all. And then this hooks on there, and it'll hook on that other pot, and then close down, pull it down. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> So there's three, one more, let's make sure we got them all going the right direction, yep, that would be just like something I would do. So there we have it, we have these catches all on, now this will just set inside there, like so. Now keep in mind, we got a filter that has to go between these two yet. You think it looks better? My lovely assistant behind the camera there, she says I should line the handles up. She said it looks better. So, what do you guys think? That close enough? Okay. All right, did it for you, babe. <laughs> looks pretty good. And these are adjustable, so I just want to make sure I have them so that they'll pull down in. Honestly, I think I'm just going to put them just under the rim. Really? Looks good like that. So I'm just making these marks. So, now we'll take this one and we'll drill these. Got all the holes drilled for the top, or this is the bottom piece that'll hold that on. Hopefully, it'll work. These are adjustable, so I put them on there with just some pop rivets and that'll fasten down there. So I got two more of those to put on, and let's hope, above hope, that, uh, you know, they're in the right place. <laughs> so those are all on. Now let's hope and pray that they uh, line up good. Well, one thing we discovered, it can only go together one way. There's one. So they all snap in and hold. And they're all down on there good. So I think we're okay. Looks good. She's solid. 
I like it. All right, that's that part of it. Now what I need to do, obviously the sap will be poured in the top. So I've got to uh, get rid of this old label. But I've got to put a vacuum line into this here and then a drain spigot at the bottom. So I think what we'll do first is let's put our vacuum line in. So we're going to have to drill this again with a much larger hole um, and then go from there. You want your vacuum line tipped down. Now keep in mind this goes inside because if you don't tip this down, what's going to happen is when you pour syrup in, it's going to come into your vacuum line and you don't want that. So this is going to go on the inside. This is going to be through this here, and then a bulkhead fitting goes on like that over the hole, and then tighten it on the inside, compression, and it squeezes this in and gives us a solid seal against our metal. Because all we're going to do is create a vacuum in this bottom piece. So we'll mark it somewhere here. I just put this in here because this is thinner walled metal and when I'm knocking holes in it, it makes it easier to hit on it. Okay. put my bulkhead vacuum fitting in the side it just goes in here and tightens in here onto this outside piece it's threaded and then I put a um, well this is just part of the fitting right there against the steel all I'm doing here this is an insert that goes inside of this line so that my uh, plastic or rubber tubing will fit onto this so I'm just gonna glue this in here just like that twist it a bit so it seats in there nice now the last thing I have to do is we have to have a way to get the sap out of there so we'll just use a stainless steel spigot I'm not sure if I'm going to use this one or not we'll see but I'll probably put it the vacuum line to be there and I'll probably put this on the other side here just so I can have it out of the way of the vacuum line so this is another type of bulkhead fitting and it's made so that I can take a spigot screw right into it just like that like this and this will go through the sidewall this goes on here and then that goes through like so And then on the inside, there's this ru little rubber uh, O-ring. There's one here and there's one here. And this goes here. And this goes through. And then this will tighten down like so. And that gives us a seal on the inside for that. And that's how that goes. We've got everything assembled. We've got our spigot here simple stainless steel spigot we've got all of our toggle clasps in place we've got this heavy filter and we had a splatter guard for the frying pan um, so it was clean uh, and been used so I cut the frame off it and I'm just putting this in here dropping it in that gives me another bit of filtration so there's dual filtration there and we've got our vacuum pump hooked back here if you can see it there this is where a vacuum pump now we're going to see if it works so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put water in the top and that will hopefully suck down through really fast to do this, I'm going to bring it over here, see if we can set it on this chair so that everyone can see. Bring it over here. And now I'm going to get some water, pour some water in there, and let's see what it does. 
And the minute I hit it, I pour water in, um, I'll hit this switch. What we want to see happen here is the water instantly gets sucked right down into the bottom pan. So here we go. There's one bit of water. There's two bit. Here we go. Look at that. There it is, empty. So just like that, we have our vacuum filter. So I'm really pleased with how it works. Obviously that's a water test. Maple syrup is thicker when it's finished off, but I think we're gonna be fine. This here, again, you can buy them, six, $800. I have, um, all I got basically in this is a little bit of time and a little bit of expense. The most expensive part was the motor or the vacuum pump. And we do appreciate that so much um, from our subscribers and from our friends. And that, when it's maple syrup we're filtering, will be bottled maple syrup. Can't wait to try this this week with maple syrup. This is going to really speed up the filtering process. It'll pull that sap right down through that filter, whereas with gravity filtering, it just takes so long to get it done, and then your filter clogs up with sand. And This way, we got that, and we're done. So that, my friends, is a homemade, do-it-yourself, maple syrup vacuum filter device. This will handle about two gallons at a time, which is fine for us because if we need, if we have five gallons of syrup that needs filtering, we'll just do two gallons, drain it out, bottle it up, pour the rest in. Real simple, real easy. There's the first filter comes out. There's our second filter right there. If I want to clean it, I just unsnap. One. Two, three, four. Give it a little tug because it's vacuumed in there. Just like that. Pull my vacuum line off. Move it out of the way. Make sure we get rest of this out of here. There we go. And then you can wash everything. Just like that. It's all stainless steel. Do it yourself, maple syrup vacuum filter to speed up the vacuuming or the filtering process for maple syrup. It will definitely um, expedite it, make things more efficient. And also it's going to remove more of that sand from the maple syrup as well. So we appreciate you watching. Thank you everybody. And Stay tuned because we've got a whole bunch more. I'm going to show you how this works with actual maple syrup. Fingers crossed it works as good as it does with water. I think it will. Appreciate everyone that's watching. And we're going to uh, take this down and get it uh, ready to go. We've got a bunch of spiles in the trees. We've got about, oh, we're just getting started here. So we've got about 100 gallons of raw sap to boil down already. Hopefully we'll have another 100 gallons here in the next couple of days. If the weather ever clears up, we'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching. Please share the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, why don't you do so? It's free. It helps us out grow this channel. Tell your friends about us. Share. Hit that thumbs up. Leave a nice comment. Any questions, feel free to ask them. We'll see you right back here at Creekside Maples. Take care. God bless. We'll see you next time.